Hello, welcome, friends. My name is Avinash Gorakshekar, and I welcome all of you to another interesting episode of Connexia High Flyers. Friends, uh, in these episodes, as all of you are aware, we talk to you about emerging companies from emerging sectors, and we make it a point to talk to the promoters and the top managements of such companies. Uh, in this process, we get a lot of valuable information from the top management, from the promoters on the company's business model, uh, their growth journey, their future growth plans. And this helps our investors to understand these companies in a much better way uh, so that investments can be made here. Uh, and today, friends, we have got a very interesting company, which is from the jewelry space and which is going to hit the capital market very soon. The company's name is Utsav CZ Gold uh, Jewelers uh, Limited. And uh, we have the privilege of having the senior management team. We have Mr. Harpreet Ularia, who is the CEO of the company. Uh, yeah, Harpreet ji, thank you very much for sparing your valuable time with us. Uh, I'm pretty confident that in this small interaction which we have today, uh, we'll be able to understand your company's operations in a much better way. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, Harpreet ji, the first question is very elementary. Uh, Samko sir, company ke business model ke baare mein bataiye. If you could explain to us what is the main business of the company, we do know it is into jewelry segment. But uh, kon se segments mein company kaam karti hai? And basically, uh, if you could tell us, you know, uh, since you are a senior management team member, uh, you know, how did uh, the promoters get into this business? Was it was it a, a business which was started by their fathers and uh, earlier relatives, or was it a first generation effort? If you could please, uh, you know, share these inputs and then start. See, the promoters are uh, basically Pankaj Jagawat and uh, Jagawat family. Now, they were into retail business years back. And they started this business in 2007 when they launched this company, where they thought of expanding from retail to manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first line, what they started was CZ Casting Jewelry, which today they are a niche in the market. And uh, of course, uh, it has been a journey for them and it has been a lot of uh, hard work and uh, and uh, what do you call the product building up, which they uh, were involved into, into it. And uh, today we stand uh, on CZ industry, we stand uh, on uh, between one to five and uh, we are quite close to our competitors where, where our products are well uh, accepted by our buyers. So today we okay. are speaking about Utsav. Now Utsav was established in the year 2007. And since then the journey has been uh, tremendous. The growth of the company has been uh, every year. It has been, uh, if you see our balance sheets, it has been 100% growth. Because every year they came out with something new in terms of designs, quality, the value added services, what they added on the jewelry itself. And uh, things were pretty good. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, the jewelry was accepted very well with the market also. And today we are in all the leading stores across Pan India and as well as we started exports also. So it has been a great uh, journey for uh, Utsa. Uh, and uh, today we stand where uh, you can see our turnarounds. Uh, nicely articulated by you, Harpi uh, Ji. Now, tell me one thing, uh, sir. Uh, you know, in what categories does the company operate? Like, is it gold, silver, diamonds, or any other category? Agar aap thoda sa, you know, product profile ke baare mein, if you can tell us that what are so the we only product categories? We only manufacture uh, gold jewelry, and that also it's hundred percent CZ casting jewelry right now, and uh, okay. we deal in eighteen karat and twenty two karat. Where in 18 karat we have rose gold, which are lightweight jewelry and designer weight jewelry. And uh, in uh, or you, you can say traditional type of wear. And uh, uh, it's it's not only South we deal in. We deal in Pan India. We've got we have a we we do like B two B only. We don't have any B two C concepts. And uh, well, that's that's about it. And uh, the jewelry, what we are making is 100% in-house. We don't manufacture any jewelry or any any part of jewelry which is uh, going outsource. It's 100% in-house manufacturing only. Okay. Understood. 
uh, if you could tell me, sir, now you said we have a B2B business. We are not into B2C. So when you say B2B, do you have any distributors who actually take the product from you and then finally sell it to the final customer? Does the you know business operate under this kind of model? If you could please clarify. Uh, we do have certain distributors in areas like UP and all. But 90% we have direct selling to B2B and we have marketing team uh, who who service their counters. And uh, we also uh, display our jewelries through exhibitions, which is our main key of uh, selling point where uh, we get new customers and new buyers coming in. Uh, okay. that's, that's the only model we have right now on selling B2B. You know. Okay, no, understood. Uh, now tell me one thing, when you have a B2B model, sir, uh, uh, what is the kind of branding strategy the company operates? Like uh, you have a distributor, you said, you know, in certain pockets where, you know, and obviously you have your marketing team which services those distributors. Does the company have a kind of a visible brand or basically you make the jewelry, the distributor takes it up and then rebrands it and sells it to the customer? I mean, is there a branding strategy? That's what I want to understand. Yeah. Now, initially, yeah, when 2007, we started Utsav, we came in MRP basis where the branding was done. And uh, we had some uh, models also who used to display. And uh, we had shop and shop type of a concept where on MRP, our jewelry used to be sold. You know, that is when uh, Utsav got uh, yeah. quite some uh, coverage across India. And gradually, as, as on time uh, went by, we started uh, supplying it to all the stores uh, across Pan India. That was uh, the corporate stores, you can say, who are uh, in all the cities today. And uh, accordingly, only we started doing our marketing, you know. So th that's how the marketing okay. was established with Utsav. You know. And Utsav from 2007 to okay. 2009 was already established as a name. Uh, because we were into shop and shop concept and uh, we were selling okay. our lightweight jewelry that time also on MRP basis. So uh, we didn't have much of difficulty in uh, branding our product. And where it goes when we supply to all the corporates, okay. we make the jewelry as per their needs. And we've got in-house designers who have been 24-7 designing our products. And uh, uh, that's how we go display it to them. And they select the designs and that's how we do our production. So, uh, sir, tell me one thing that, uh, you know, within the, uh, you know, Pan India coverage, which are the key markets for the company, which are supposed to be the larger markets for Otsa? Like from where does the company get its maximum revenue? You know, where does the company get its revenue company? Ko milta hai? Today, uh, today, what we are, uh, uh, we do Pan India. But revenues, uh, in terms of revenue, we, our, our main markets are Maharashtra, which is, I can give you certain figures where we, we, we are into uh, in 2024. Uh, Maharashtra, we have about 19.80 percentage. And then uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, we have about 16 percent. And Gujarat is 10 percent. That's how it goes. You know, and Uttar Pradesh is about 10 percent. And that is how we, we distribute our margins or uh, the, the markets, you know. Okay. One, one question, sir, which I wanted to ask, which got left out initially. Uh, sir, on the designing side, you know, obviously jewelry business is all about creativity and design. So, you know, in terms of the designing part, uh, does the company have an in-house design team? And how, you know, is, uh, are these, how frequently are these designs, uh, you know, re uh, refreshed? And, you know, how quickly uh, are the deliveries made to the customer? Assuming, you know, uh, XYZ customer comes to you and gives you a design and you work on it, it's finalized. Sir, from the time you design it till the time you deliver it, normally, sir, kitna time period hota hai? What is the time cycle from oh, designing? If you, to, if you say you know, the time period, the time is about, uh, since the design is ready, we take about 15 days to deliver it to the customers. 10 to 15 days. Okay. And in-house, we have a CAD team. We have about 60 uh, designers. And uh, uh, we have designs coming in every day, which we keep on selecting and uh, rejecting accordingly. As per the uh, market scenario, and uh, we have uh, designs every month. We have about two hundred plus designs coming in new. So we we are okay. pretty well equipped with the designs. Yes. Okay. Understood. Uh, 
sir now one more thing i wanted to understand is that you know uh, in terms of the pricing for the product category you are in gold uh, uh, you know jewelry which you mentioned initially tell me one thing sir how is the pricing decided for a particular b2b kind of a customer assuming you know there is a customer who agrees on the designs a particular volume of business is agreed upon सर गोल्ड में तो गोल्ड के प्राइस के ऊपर सब कुछ डिपेंडेंट होता है तो हमको बताइए सर बीच में अगर गोल्ड का प्राइस बढ़ गया एंड बाद में यू नो वंस द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट स्टार्ट्स डू यू हैव सम वेरिएशन और सम फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी वेयर यू कैन रिकवर द बेसिक कॉस्ट और इज इट अ फिक्स्ड प्राइस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट तो प्राइसिंग के बारे में बताइए वी हैव फिक्स्ड प्राइसेस सर्टेनली इन 18 कैरेट वी हैव अ फिक्स्ड प्राइस एंड एज़ वेल एज़ इन 22 कैरेट वी हैव फिक्स्ड प्राइसेस एंड वी नो आवर कंपनी एक्सपेंसेस अकॉर्डिंगली वी वर्क आउट द प्राइसेस and uh, they are standard for all the uh, b2b customers we don't change uh, our prices because we we provide quality and uh, our designs are number one so accordingly we have to you know maintain our standards also and uh, we have fixed prices on that so we don't change uh, price factors on uh, every now and then you know okay understood okay now uh, coming to the you know the overall macro industry opportunity see in uh, the recent budget i think you know one good part has been that on gold you know import duties have been reduced so you know now gold prices have also corrected sir so, pehla yeah. first question to you is will this impact our business positively and secondly sir how big is the opportunity for us like today we are about 275 crores in terms of top line in the next say 3 to 4 years you know what is the kind of strategy the company has Uh, so that you know it capitalizes on this growth because organized uh, you know players in this space are increasingly growing more and more better unorganized is losing its market share so sir iske bare mein bataiye ki what is our company strategy to capitalize on this growth and on the budget you know with these changes coming in will this positively impact our business in the coming year so so basically if you see our balance sheets we have increased 60% growth from since the last year and uh, 2025 the financial year 25 26 we expect another 25 30% growth in our uh, in our sales but the only thing is that you know uh, the 6% which is reduced by the government will definitely affect business in positive fashion because you know it's a trend the gold rate goes down people start rushing to buy gold and and in in uh, in india today gold is such a commodity that people love to to keep on buying and change their old jewelry into new jewelry so i don't feel uh, there's going to be a negative impact it's it's definitely going to be a positive impact and it's going to grow day by day you you've seen a uh, last couple of years even even uh, if last year the gold rate was about 75000 rupees today it's it's maybe it's 70000 still the growth rate there was no difference between the growth part but yes unorganized sectors will have an impact because you know today if the gold rate is competing to an international gold rate your your sales will increase both domestic as well as international also so which will help us a lot here. Okay. Uh, now coming to another important uh, question uh, sir i just want to understand sir how do we add value to the customer like you know we tackle b2b customer sir what is the value proposition which we give to the b2b customer because see there are a lot of listed players there are a lot of unlisted players in the gold jewelry space now what is so special about our company and what uh, you know things we do differently so that the customers come to us they are happy with our designs they are happy with our service sir two three qualitative points if you can share for us which can help us understand your company in a much better see jewelry is one thing where where a lady it's it's like an it's like a trophy for a lady you know today you it is the designs what play around you know you have to keep on adding in new designs you have to be with the with the with the world what what international players are uh, are sending it to you so the the more of designs the more of quality what you can add on is is what the attraction with our b2b buyers would be is the designs and the the quality as well as the weight of the jewelry the weight of the jewelry is not very heavy and it really uh, you know suits your need i mean today uh, it's it's really going to sell so you have to be very careful of what you're supplying to your b2b customers and you have to be very careful of your designs your designs and your quality really plays a vital role in your in your business you know okay 
understood. I think very uh, nicely articulated by you. Uh, sir, now let us come to the financial part. As you rightly mentioned, sir, FY23 was a very strong year. FY24, the first 10 months, you know, where numbers have been presented in the prospect of also numbers have been very solid. 275 crores uh, revenue, 10.7 crore, uh, 75 crore profit. Now, broadly, tell us one thing, sir. How has this growth materialized? Has it been a combination of price and volume? Like more volumes have been pushed to the B2B distributor, plus you have been benefited by better pricing. So, has both volume and pricing benefited you? That's why, you know, numbers have been very strong till January, which have been presented in the prospect. If you could share your thoughts on that. Yes, sir, and as price said, made a little difference, but you can't say 100% yeah. price did make a difference over there. We yeah. uh, also added in some new territories and new, some new buyers which also added our sales and plus we started exports and our numbers were not uh, 275 it's above 350 crores so we are uh, to uh, 2023 24 we close to 340 oh, okay. so and and we are increasing because we are increasing territories as well as we are aggressive on our uh, again i would say we are aggressive on our our designs and our quality which uh, is attracting all our customers, new customers also to add on on our portfolios. Okay, and I understood. Uh, point taken, uh, well articulated, sir. Now tell me one thing, sir. Uh, you know, normally what is the kind of working capital cycle in our business? Typically, if you could just tell us right from the time you get the order, you design it, you commit, uh, complete the product, and then and then send it to the B two B you know distributor. Normal working capital, our uh, liquidity is how much? See, uh, normal working capital is about 85% of your uh, jewelry cost, you know. So, and uh, that also today, if you say that we have to really put in an investment to that part. So, out of 100%, if you say the jewelry, 85% is our uh, production cost only. That includes okay. the gold part also, which is which is 90% yeah. to that 85% is our uh, gold uh, investment. No, but typically, can we assume that it's about 100 to 120 odd days that, you know, your working capital cycle, you know, is like... The no, 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 that, that is about, no, that is about uh, uh, 75 to 80, 80 days from okay. the day, date of manufacturing to, to your uh, total uh, realization of your uh, invoice. Uh, another thing, you know, uh, which I think is a related question which got left out earlier, uh, sir. I want to ask you that there are many companies like ours, you know, which have now started catering to the larger jeweler, you know, segment. Like uh, there are large players in the jewelry market which actually take, you know, gold jewelry done on a contractual basis from, you know, players like us. Uh, is this also an opportunity, sir, which we are looking at? Because, you know, there are many companies which are listed in the market where actually they are not B2C players, they are B2B players. But they cater to the listed, you know, jewelry players. Unke paas design hota hai. They get it manufactured from companies like us. And obviously that business is also flourishing. So is the no, company we, planning this kind of arrangement also? No, we don't plan to do that. Because we have, uh, we are aggressive in our uh, part itself of selling the jewelry more than doing labor jobs. And uh, okay. we have enough of orders in hand where we would definitely only make new designs and manufacture uh, new products only you know we will not uh, intend to do any labor jobs okay so no, understood point taken uh, now sir tell me one thing we have seen that you know you have got a very good strong good top line growth profit growth has also been quite very strong and impressive but somehow you know in the financials which we were observing the cash flows have continued to be negative operating cash flows for the last three years are minus in fact in the latest year also uh, you know whatever has been presented in the prospectus you have seen the operating cash flow minus. So a large part of your, uh, you know, uh, profitability is taken away by working capital. So can we assume that once the IPO is complete, you know, you all will be able to generate positive operating cash flow going forward? See, there is this business is total gold intense. You have to invest more money in gold. And then when you supply the jewelry till the time it is supplied to our end users and increase in, in what you call the inventory, well, definitely, always you can see that type of a scenario, you know. But the only thing is that the more the more that faster the turner turnaround we can do, the of course the negative part what you see on our balance sheets can increase to a positive impact. Correct. So fine, understood. But I was just seeing that you know most of the funding, uh, sir, has been done by short term borrowings. You know, 
uh, in FY21, it was about 50 odd crores. In FY24, whatever is the reported number that has gone up to 70 crores. So going forward, once the public issue money comes in, you know, because I believe the company is going to go public soon. So will right. that money actually replace the short-term borrowings and actually help the company going forward? That's what I want yes, to know. In, in, in terms of interest, yes, it will definitely put in an impact. The profitability might go up. And also, yeah. uh, if you see, we don't use 70 crores as the limit. We've been utilizing only 50, 55 crores, uh, if I have to be pre precisely on it, where uh, we have our own reserves with the banks itself in terms of FDs okay. and stuff like that. So, so, so we are pretty, uh, what do you call, uh, that way we are, uh, whatever turnover we are doing, we're not utilizing 100% of the limit also. Oh, oh, understood. Oh, fine. Point taken. Uh, so now tell us uh, something on the public issue. If you could tell us, you know, the company is going to go public. Uh, what is the size of the, uh, you know, capital market offering and basically for what purpose are the funds being raised by the company? If you could please share your thoughts. See, right now we are uh, opting for 70 crores. And uh, the reason what we are launching this IPO SME was just for the growth of the company to buy metal, make more jewelry, expand more markets, expand more buyers. That is what our main intentions are. Because we are fully equipped with, uh, with machinery and uh, labor. And we have enough of capacity to increase our turnover. You can say double itself. So we have okay. enough of room in the same facility to manufacture jewelry than what we are doing right now. We can double our turnover in the same facility, you can say. Okay. okay. So understood. Uh, uh, another thing which I wanted to know is that currently, what is the total size of the employee base? You know, if you take into account uh, the designers plus the working staff, you know, people who are actually working uh, full time, the permanent ones, as well as the, you know, temporary workers. So we are close to about 200 uh, staff that includes the contract as well as there were employees. So okay. we have 200 staff, okay. yes. Okay. And uh, another but thing... You know, plus only. Yeah, fine. Understood. Uh, another thing which I wanted to understand from you is that is our business little seasonal, you know, like Diwali, Christmas, New Year... Sir, does it happen that the second half is typically more better than the first half? I mean, is it a normal phenomenon for a jewelry company like us? Or is it a very stable period for both the first half as well as the second half? See, this year we, we've been facing, it's quite stable from uh, FY24-25. April, May, June, quarter, we, we, we are up then last year by about 20 to 30 percent. But yes, uh, seasonal does make a lot of difference. August is the season where we start where we have festives as well as uh, marriage seasons approaching. So, of course, uh, the sales are tripled uh, from August to March. So, that makes a difference, okay. yes. Okay, understood. Okay, now last question, uh, uh, which is very important, you know, which we ask all the promoters. Uh, sir, what is the main, uh, you know, business risk in our, you know, category of business? Like, we all faced COVID, which was, of course, a very, uh, you know, unique and a very rare kind of uh, development for everybody. But right. if you leave out, out COVID... What is the main risk in our business and how have we managed this risk very optimally? Now, uh, just to tell you, we believe that gold prices are something which are very critical for our business. So typically, apart from gold prices, you know, what is it that uh, is most important to remain float and profitable in this business? And how have you managed to maintain and, you know, control this risk optimally? So if you could please tell us. See, uh, where it goes to gold prices, it's really not affected uh... Last couple of seasons, we've seen, in fact, last couple of years, we've seen the growth of gold. But uh, we haven't got affected by by any rate change or something like that. Yes, uh, like uh, the duty structure, which has gone down, will definitely increase business, in fact. And risk factor today, everything is insured. Your logistic is insured. Your, uh, your, your buyers are insured. Everything is insured. So I don't think that really there is any risk factor in investing in gold and and doing gold business today, you know. It used to be in olden days where, you know, you didn't know it was quite an unorganized sector. But today, being an, un being, being an organized sector, you are pretty safe, you know. And I don't think so. There is any risk factor as such. It's like any other commodity, what business, what you're doing, you know. And it's all 100% incashable. So, you know, there is no other commodity which is that quickly that you can, uh, that anybody can encash, in fact, you know. So I think, uh, you know, uh, definitely, you know, looking at the current demand trends and the kind of 
uh, you know lifestyle habits of customers i'm quite sure that you know our company has got a very good future because gold jewelry business is growing rapidly and organized sector is definitely you know growing by leaps and bounds so obviously it should benefit us also going forward so harpreet ji thank you very much for your valuable time today uh, we had a very thank good you. discussion and uh, would like to wish you your entire management team best wishes and best wishes for your forthcoming ipo also thank you very much thank you so much thank you so much